back to Empower Your Parent Voice, What You Need to Know to Be Your Child's Best Advocate. I'm Pat Minishak. And I'm Diane Canaver. And today we have a topic of great interest to everybody because you all can relate to it if you've been to school, and most of us have been. It's that report card we all get. And what we want to talk about today is, was it a dreaded report card for you or was it a desired report card for you? Go back emotionally and think how you felt when you knew that report card was coming because what we're going to do today is talk about your child's report card and how we don't want it to be the dreaded report card, but the desired report card. Um, Mrs. Minishak, you have some words of wisdom today? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do, Ms. Canava. Our words of wisdom today is we'd like you to expect to play an active role in your child's learning. We want you to be the go-to person in your child's life. And in order for you to be that go-to person, we've actually put together um, a number of topics today on um, how you can be that person that you want your child to always go to. And if we take a look at those, um, what the, we actually are starting with, the first one today that we're going to be looking at is uh, what proactive behaviors are required to stay on top of your child's educational program. That's number one. Number two is, what you need to know and be able to do to get the most out of your child's report card. And we're going to be looking at some key points that we'd like you to be able to do in order to get the most out of that report card. And the last one that we're going to be talking about is why it's even more important to spring into action throughout the last semester of your child's school year. Because what you're actually doing is you're setting your child up for success for the next school year. Mm -hmm. And it's never too late or never too early, I should say, to start that type of behavior yeah. and being able to set them up for their future. Now, the first thing we're going to be looking at today is we're going to be looking at the proactive behavior that we're going to be wanting you to be able to accomplish. And uh, Diane's going to share some helpful hints and some tips on what you can do to become more proactive in your child's life to get the most out of that educational program that your child's in. Right, and if you can remember, to be proactive is to respond, not to react to something. And in pro being proactive is almost doing a readiness or preparation for something. And so prior to that report card, we feel that what you need to really do is to build and maintain a strong relationship with your child as a student. Not only the teacher has to have the relationship with your child as a student, but you should also. And how do you do that? Well, you have to share what's going on at school. How was your day? And you see what the papers they did. You look at the homework that's coming home. Um, you also have a student folder where you keep samples of the work. Uh, you can establish open communication lines between the home and the school. When you look at those kinds of papers and the homework assignments, if they're getting graded, what quality they are, if your child's not completing their work. Uh, the other thing is to keep any teacher documentation you may get. So what we're thinking of here when we say proactive behavior is to have everything at your fingertips that tells you what your child is as a student. And this way you can be monitoring the um, progress they're making, the regression they're making, um, just by looking at the pieces of paper they're bringing home or your discussion that you're having with your child as far as how is their school day going. So it actually, when you think about some of the things that you just talked about, and we have a few more tips that you're going to be speaking of, we actually want them to actually go back to some of the um, communication skills that we talked about in mm -hmm. prior um, videos. Um, a lot of the uh, good communication skills are going to be very important because you're, you're saying you want to open those lines up and keep them open with your mm -hmm. child, correct? Exactly. That's a good point. And then as you go on, you're talking about being visible. Well, that's the other part of the communication piece. It's not just the written language or it's part of the conversation you have as you go into the school building, being involved with what's going on there so that you can see um, Being supportive in the school in well, general is important. You want yeah. to be able to see some of the things that your child's experiencing throughout the day. 
on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, I, I, the way I, I kind of hesitated because I didn't want you to be a spy. But no, you, you don't need, want the helicopter you, parents. You, exactly. I understand what you're you saying. You don't want to overdo it and, and make them overwhelm. My mom's here again. What is she doing here? Every time I turn around, my mother's in the school. That's not exactly what I mean. What I mean is you attend a parent conference, or you, you attend a book fair, or you help out in the library, and you get the atmosphere and the feeling for the building, what your child's atmosphere is during the school day. Even if you look you know, through the cafeteria when it's lunchtime, so you see what they go through, and you can really put on the cloak that they have to wear every day as a student in that school environment. Um, so you're really just saying enforce, reinforce some of the things that they, they're trying to mm -hmm. do to enhance the child's educational program. Exactly. Not be that helicopter parent that's constantly dropping in or, right. you know, what are you doing? But but setting it up so that even if it's, you know, when the child comes home from school, mm. that you, you know, sit down with them and have a cup of tea or hot chocolate, maybe mm. a little snack type mm. of thing, you know, so that you're really finding out what's going on in their mm. life mm. and in the school, yeah. right? Yeah, and it, it's strange because I, I heard a conversation just the other day how some parents relate to their school as the family. You know, and, and that point. is a family. That is an extension of your family and is an extent of your child's world. So, you know, you, you cannot live in isolation the home from the school, especially if you want to be proactive and be aware of what is going on in that atmosphere and what kinds of things your child may be going through day to day or have to expect. And the changes, too. Oh, well, that's the other thing is what's the curriculum like? Um, What's going on in, in this part of the building? Are they teaming up as teachers? Um, uh, are they handling things a little bit differently? Are the fifth graders coming down to the first graders and reading books with them? You just be involved. What is going on? Um, uh, uh, especially like during a, a standardized testing day, how quiet is your school and things like that. Now the other thing that you had mentioned was making sure that you attend the conferences or mm -hmm. maybe attending the things that are important as you know, maybe field trips or anything that they're looking for parents to become mm. more involved. And we are going to talk a lot more about yeah. that in one of our yeah. other shows. So, yeah. you know, we want you to know that we're not going to just cut things off at this point, but that we are going to, you know, expand it on our, on our next show. Mm. But the last thing that we have here is that you want them to to try and be more organized, and yeah. that was another thing we talked yeah, about Yeah, to organize, earlier. keep a binder, keep all the documentation from the teacher, from your child, so you can see September to December to April to the end of the year. Every time there's a report card that comes out, put that there. Every time you go to a conference, put your notes there. Did you ask questions? Have they been answered? What other kinds of thoughts do you have for the next time you may want to go in to talk to a teacher? Uh, it's good to have that timeline there, and it's all visual in front of you. And maybe you can see the progress from this year's binder to last year's binder. And, and <clears throat> the most important thing is keep your efforts alive towards this time of the year. It is the end of the year. People are getting tired. It's been a, a lot, if it's been a long winter, you've had many snow days, if you live in that part of the world and um, it, it, there's a lot of interruptions with your child may be ill and out of school the thing is keep alive because the weather is getting warmer and your child needs to go to school and you need to keep that motivation going I, I would like to say one more thing with that I think that's a very very good point because remember you do model for your children mm. and if you're modeling behaviors that are like letting them know that you're you know, quieting down and you're kind of giving up and you're saying, oh, you know, it's mm. the end of the school year. Well, that type of modeling behavior really goes over onto your child and your child will, will carry that through. That's you know, right. it's like even not just in the lower levels, but as they get into the upper levels, like in high school, you know, is your child or you a quitter or are you a finisher? Right. And that is so critical when it comes down mm. to even the senior year of high school, mm. you know, when they're jockeying for positions on where you finish in class, you know, a kid who's like in the top of the class or second of the top 5%, mm. I'm telling you, that makes a huge difference if they don't finish up with right. what they're doing, and it, that could bump right. them into different positions in their class standing. Right. So I think that's a, a great yeah. point that you just made. Um, we're going to move on to the next one, which is viewing your child's report card. You know, doing it in a purposeful way is so critical when you're, you're thinking about you're getting these report cards. Mm. You get them throughout the school year, you know, how can you look at these with a purposeful, you know, mm. uh, look or right. a purposeful manner so that you're getting the most and your child's mm. getting the most mm. out of each mm. one of them. And I think that goes back to what you said initially when you're talking about, you know, the dreaded uh, you know, anticipation, 
you know, are you, are you really looking forward to it or are you going, oh, God, that thing is coming and I'm yeah. really nervous? You know, and so we, when it does come out, what can you do with it? What's yeah. the most effective thing? Well, if, whether you view it on the computer because it's electronically sent to you or a hard copy that comes in the mail, it's right there in front of you. And, you know, you look at the subject matter. You look at the language arts, you look at the math, and you say, okay, this is the grade they're getting now. What did they get before? What is their grade? Is it passing? Is it failing? Is it just right on the, the right level they should be as far as you feel their achievement level is? So what is the significance of that grade? Did it go up? Did it go down? Did you expect more to be happening? Now, if you think the grade is below what it should be, you look at a science or a social studies, what was the competency they taught that time? I mean, if you're in social studies in last term, they did really well, and they were doing maps and geography, and this time they got like a C or a C plus, you say, gee, that went down quite a bit. You need to find out why. Maybe they're teaching concepts. They're teaching the political history of a country. So it's a whole different competency level they're teaching for that subject so, matter. So then what you're talking about then also would be how are they assessing those types of activities right. in the curriculum? You know, when it goes back to maybe they're using a rubrics, and usually those types of um, levels of evaluation are actually spelled mm. out in a rubrics, mm. which is, which is kind of like a grid type of mm. thing, so that each one of the things that they're looking for in the classroom, the teacher usually, hopefully, will give out you know exactly what the specifics are that mm -hmm. each assignment will mm -hmm. entail and if the child falls between these types of uh, you know assessment pieces you know they're graded according to that right. so you know these are all things that you can find out as a parent and you know either discuss that with the child mm -hmm. which is what you're talking about mm -hmm. here you know how does your teacher yeah. evaluate what were they looking yeah. for so that's what yeah. basically it, was meant it by could the competency. be a, a whole different type of performance level too rather Perfect. than doing book knowledge or text or note taking and outlining all of a sudden now in science they're in labs so it's, you need to be aware of what is going on that quarter what is your child being um, taught and at the end what do they expect the child to be able to do and that's what we mean by Perfect. competencies Perfect. Yep. Um, so you, the other thing is oh if the teacher writes any comments really take them to heart they're important because the teacher will take time to write that comment and if there's something there um, that you need to know about missing homeworks or passing things in late or not participating in class very well or we need to speak, you need to make an appointment for that. So you need to be very familiar with the grade level learning standards and their expectations. And so that when you are walking in, talking to a teacher, uh, you've done your homework too. And, and I think you made a very good point when you're talking about really analyzing what the teacher is saying. It's not, it's not good enough for them to just put down, oh, he's a wonderful child or she does very well, pays mm -hmm. attention. You know, if, if you feel that some of the comments that are being made really don't give you some information, concrete information, to help you and to help your child mm. to do even better next time, then, then that's also a thing that might, you mm. might want to look at when you're talking about setting up a conference. You know, so I think those are things mm. that, you know, when, when Diane was talking about looking at those comments and analyzing mm. them, I think that's, that's an important thing to realize. Mm. You know, we all want... Our, our child to be, you know, a great student, paying attention, but I want to know a little more than that. Oh, yeah, like in the language arts area when they get much older and they're doing more oral presentations than just a straight research, I mean, even if they say your child is performing very well this term, what does that mean? I mean, you like to know the kind of skills they're picking up also. It's not always negative. You want to know the positive things they're learning also. Um, Take, the next thing is to talk yeah. over the grades report cards with your child. Um, you know, oh, really yeah. go in depth with your child to see, you know, exactly. You know, it's talking it out. Yeah. Talk it yeah. out with them. Yeah. Once once you've done all your little, like I said, homework, go to the go to your child, and say to them, we need to have a little bit of a conference here. You know, what do you think this grade means? Um, why did this happen? You know, um, is, is the class too difficult for you? Give them their day in court. Let them explain. 
you know? Uh, give them more credit. And this is part of their advocacy um, kinds of skills. Like Patty said, you want to model the right kind of behaviors to question things. Maybe they thought a grade they got wasn't a fair grade. You know, maybe they don't remember missing so many homeworks. Maybe there was a time they could have gone and made up some work prior to a report card. So you teach them some little skills there. And then if you find your child's very overwhelmed and it's something that cannot be settled in, in a little conference you have with them, then you need to talk to the teacher and maybe your child should be part of that conference and get some sort of a plan together. What do I need to do to be better? I can't meet deadlines. Well, let's break it all down, you know, Sets and figure strategies. out how to do it. Get the strategies there. What about the work habits? Maybe you need to set up a place for them to do their homework where it's very quiet. Maybe on Tuesdays you concentrate on a certain thing that night, you know, that kind of thing. Your responsibilities at home as well as their responsibilities in school if they need to go to a computer lab or something like that. So that you can actually help them to set up a monitoring system hmm. themselves and have them take part in it. And exactly. what you're basically doing is you're you're enforcing the whole idea of the concept of proactive behavior, right. not just in yourself, but also in your child and how they approach mm -hmm. something. So mm -hmm. that you can actually set, sit together and set up those strategies and make that a working thing that, that, so they can accomplish the next steps. Now we're going to be also be taking a look at this when we're talking about special education oh, exactly. situations. Right. You know, a special education um, child already th that already receives services mm -hmm. and maybe on an IEP. Right. So maybe some of there, there are some other things that you mm -hmm. want to take a look at when you're, when you're discussing those things um, and, and, and how they receive their reports. Yeah, well, over and above what the regular um, streamlined child gets in the, in the schoolroom, your child will get the same thing. You'll, they'll get their report card also. But every specialist that has worked with your child during that last quarter needs to write, and it's written. It's not a verbal. It's a written report on what they've done that month with your, uh, excuse me, that quarter with your child, and what the outcomes are according to the IEP. What is that objective I was supposed to be teaching? What they were supposed to be learning? What is the current performance level on that skill? And, it, and you should be able to take the IEP out and look at that, that the subject matter, if it's OT, PT, if it's speech, whatever it happens to be, and say, they worked on this, and let me see, oh, the, the specialist said they've gone this far with it. And um, if you have any questions, you need to contact them and get some clearer information. But you need to know that every time the regular population gets something, the special needs population um, staff needs to be getting you something also it's with the reports and with the conference times. They all go together. They're scheduled at the exact same times. And these are also true with Title I and any accommodation oh. plans also, correct? Well, Title I, if that's another person on the staff you need to contact, you need to contact them. That is a person that's responsible for the progress of your child. And you should speak up and say, well, how are they doing? The other thing is accommodation plan. If they have a 504 plan, that is reviewed annually each year. Um, so either you need to contact guidance or the principal, whoever is in charge of that, as the IEP is also going to be reviewed annually. Now, if we're, if we're taking, you know, a little closer look at what the purpose of these reports are, um, you know, you, you said that they get them quarterly like every other mm -hmm. child does mm -hmm. in the school system, as the regular education yeah. students do. Right. So if we're taking a, a clear look at what the purpose of these reports are, maybe you could share a little mm -hmm information on that, you know, and, um, and I want to say really a critical eye, take a right. critical eye and look at those reports as right. well. And I think it goes back to what you said about looking and making the comparisons mm -hmm. of what they're supposed to get mm -hmm. and are they truly getting those. Yes. So. And, and the other piece is it's much deeper um, than the face value of report card grade. When you get a specialist report, you're looking at that because if they're meeting all the goals and objectives on the IEP, do you want to decrease services? Is that something special so you need to discuss? Do you, want it, do you need them to be increased in the amount of time they get something? You know, each week I like can speech if they're not progressing at the level they're supposed to be. And sometimes you, there's a chance for you to say, well, this is not needed anymore, and you agree with the, um, the data that's been collected by that specialist. So each quarter, even though the IEP is reviewed as a whole, as a plan, as a program for an entire year. Each quarter, things may change. Things may be, may go, they may increase or decrease, or 
not be extended for the rest of the year. So those are things you need to know. So that's very important. You should be looking for those handwritten reports. Right. And um, going along with that, you know, when we find out that there is an issue that needs a little bit of extra help, um, it's, it's important for you it, it, staying on top of what's offered, obviously, mm. when we were talking mm. about knowing what's going on in the school, right. but is for you to be actually able to utilize support services and know what those support services are so that they're available to your child whenever they do need it. Mm. And some of those things that we're going to take a look at um, and take advantage of are um, actually peer tutoring opportunities, uh, remediation sessions, maybe some extra help sessions, and the accommodations that may be needed for your child to be able to really be successful in school. Mm. And actually, the way that I just presented them, there is a sequence to them. You know, it goes from the least amount of help down to actually going in and making accommodations in the, in the classroom that they may need. And so I think that that's really an important thing. And I think you have some question here of what, you know, what's going on here. And well, when you do look at that report card and you see something that's depressed as far as performance, is it a learning problem you're looking at or is it a lack of interest? So that's why it's so important to be proactive and to keep the communication open between yourself and the school staff. And um, I know there's a lot of staff that go online through a website. Each school has their own. The teachers are there available for emails. You can send a note. I mean, there really is no excuse for not contacting a school personnel. And they're grateful when you do that, you know, because they do have a caseload of students. And if you're happy with the F they're getting and the teacher's trying to do the best they can and the student's not doing anything better, I mean, it, it's, it's going to be a losing battle. You all need to be pulling together to pull some grades up. So I think one of the things that we need to look at when we start to talk about children having problems here is they may start to show uh, some warning signs. So you need to be really aware of being able to pick out some of these warning signs that are really truly indicators mm -hmm. of the child having or exhibiting problems, um, or even maybe student fatigue. And especially this time of the year, that's one of the things that may become more evident is student fatigue. So if we're looking at what that might look at if they're exhibiting mm. issues, um, some of those things may be um, some of the following. And the first one is low interest in daily activities. Oh, yeah. And they might be experiencing some sort of a burnout. Yeah. Or uh, yeah. like that fatigue. It could be physical. It could be emotional. You know, it could be socially. Um, those are things you need to be watchful for. Uh, waiting for the last minute to complete their reports. They procrastinate. Um, are, are there mood swings? Are they getting upset more easily over small, minor issues? Um, are there subtle changes like in their personality? Uh, are they having difficulty in getting ready for school in the morning? Um, do they have like stomach aches and more headaches? I mean, are there physical effects happening here? I mean, there are all kinds of signs they will show you, whether they're soft signs or hard signs, whether they're screeching at you or whether they're just like below the radar. And this is part of being proactive within your home to keep looking and monitoring and seeing, well, it's the end of the year. Are we all giving up? You know, we look at the clock and just counting the days till it's, till it's summertime. So be very, very careful because every day in school is important. And, and it, I think it goes back again, and I hate to keep going back to some of the things that we had talked about earlier, but it goes back to, again, using good communication skills whenever you do see some of these warning signs, is not to put your child on the defense, but to you know, use the, the I statements mm. so that you're actually, the reason why these are becoming an issue is because it's affecting you. It's affecting them, it's affecting you and your family unit or at school. And so using good communication skills and being able to try and find out what the right. problem is will, will be beneficial. Right. Right. So um, closing comment, um, I think that we need to be vigilant stay vigilant and consistent with our proactive behaviors. And those are really the keys to success, is being able to say, you know, I'm going to stay on top of this. I'm not, I am going to be a finisher. Right. I'm not going to be someone who, you know, it's the springtime, it's close to the end of school, then I, I don't really need to. Yes, you do. Yes. It's very important to stay on top. And so, um, yes. I think, right. go ahead. I would say it's almost like looking at September, you're starting fresh. You know, you've, you'll have a vacation week maybe in April or March, whatever your school system does. When you go back, think of it as September. Start fresh, you know, get motivated, get that extra energy going. Um, 
Do we have time for a, a mini cam? We are going to do a mini cam question. Yeah, we have let's, to. Let's try. Um, we, we need the bell, Miss yeah. Canava. Oh, it's time. Can you tell we've been on vacation for a while from this TV station? Yes, we have. Yeah. And here's our mini can question, and it comes from a parent for, that has a third grader. I'm just going to read it to you. Um, my child is a third grader on an IEP and re is for receiving speech services two times a week. I recently found out that her classroom teacher, from her classroom teacher, that her speech therapist has been out sick for a week mm. and may not be able to return for another week or more. So. What happens to my child's speech therapy sessions? And we have about two and a half minutes. Well, they should continue number one. Um, if it's short term or long term, you'll, you'll, you should get a notification because that's a different person taking care of your, your child and you should be notified. And um, everything should go on the way it's supposed to go. <laughs> if not, if you're noticing it's one week, two weeks, three weeks, you need to contact the special ed director immediately and find out what is going on. And the idea of um, compensatory services may be what needs to happen. They need to make up that time. They can make it up when the person comes back on board, you know, extending the, the time they see them per week, or maybe something they do during a, a summer months or something like that. But services don't stop if the staff is changed. They need to have someone in that spot. A, a qualified, a highly qualified well, it has, person. Yes, it correct? has to be someone that it's is... not just um, somebody taking over for the classroom. No, substitute. someone who is either certified or supervised by the director of that. If it's speech, then the director of speech needs to, or the OT certified person needs to supervise. So uh, that, that's something you need to look up in, in your, your guide that your school gives you. And I think a little phone call is just like, you know, hi, what's going on with, with this? And they'll let you know, because sometimes it's not that easy to get a sub in there immediately. No, that's true. But, yeah. but again, when they do put someone in there, they have oh, to be a qualified person. And continue with communication books, whatever the things are they're right. supposed to be doing. Make sure they're doing beyond just the direct service or the indirect service that they're keeping with the paperwork. So our next show, uh, and, and actually we'll cover some more of these things oh, as yeah. we go on. Our next show um, is we're going to be talking about spring cleaning for your child's educational program and, and uh, keeping, keeping things in order and meeting your responsibilities. And we'll be talking about that next time. So remember, we want you to stay informed. Um, remember, we'll try and help you with any of those things that we've already talked about because we, we're on Facebook and we actually have our website. Oh, website's and um, our website... Uh, Sorry. It's coming. It's coming. Hang on. There it is. Um, our website is uh, http slash slash www.powerfulparentvoice.com and you can directly link in from that site to uh, the Face cable program. Facebook, Facebook, the cable program, and email. Send yep. us any questions. And make sure you try and send us some questions yeah. because you know what we're trying to do is help you help your child. Right. Um, so, thank you. I feel like I was so rushed today, but I hope you all got it. Watch us again. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, and we will see you later. Bye-bye.